Most of the oxygen in our atmosphere exists below 18,000 feet, and even at altitudes above 12,000 feet, the amount of oxygen in the air can be dangerously low, which is why mountain climbers experience altitude sickness as they exceed heights of 8,000 feet. So, all that being said, have you ever wondered why you're able to breathe while cruising in an airplane at 36,000 feet in the air? As you ascend in altitude, it becomes harder for you to breathe in and maintain normal oxygen saturation due to the low air pressure. According to the FAA, in planes without a pressurized cabin, once you are between 12,500 and 14,000 feet, the flight crew is required to carry supplemental oxygen if they stay at these altitudes for more than 30 minutes. Above 14,000 feet, the flight crew must use supplemental oxygen, and above 15,000 feet, everyone on board must be provided with supplemental oxygen. So, how do commercial airplanes allow you to breathe comfortably without supplemental oxygen at even greater altitudes, and what would happen if that system were to fail? Commercial airplanes have an air pressurization system, and part of this system has been hidden in plain sight, no pun intended, to everyone who has been on or near an airplane. The engines on an airplane take in air through a series of turbofans that compress it, and the majority of this air is used to generate the plane's thrust, However, a portion of it is sent to multiple different areas of the plane. This is referred to as bleed air. As the bleed air is compressed, it gets hotter and hotter, reaching temperatures as high as 200 to 250 degrees Celsius or 392 to 482 degrees Fahrenheit. Some of the bleed air is diverted to prevent ice from forming on the engine intakes as well as the leading edges of the plane and wings. The rest is sent to passengers in the cabin, but first it must be cooled because most of us don't like sitting in 400 degree air. The air is sent into a heat exchanger in the belly of the plane where the excess heat is cooled by the outside air temperature. It is compressed again before going to another heat exchanger then sent through an expansion turbine. The expansion turbine works the same way that pursing your lips and breathing out creates cold air while opening your mouth wide and breathing out creates hot air. After all this, the air is finally sent to the passengers. Then the air pressure in the cabin is equivalent to what you'd experience at an altitude of between 6,000 and 8,000 feet. If the cabin pressurization system were to fail, how long would you be able to breathe on the airplane? Well, when this system fails, oxygen masks drop from the ceiling to give passengers the ability to directly breathe in oxygen while in low pressure. I'm sure you've seen this system demonstrated every time you get on a plane. If it weren't for these oxygen masks, you'd only have a short amount of time of useful consciousness without oxygen. At 35,000 feet, you only have between 30 and 45 seconds of useful consciousness, which is why you're instructed to put your mask on first before helping others. Believe it or not, these masks are not actually connected to a giant tank of oxygen. Pulling the mask down starts a chemical reaction in an oxygen generator, which is what creates the oxygen for you to breathe. The oxygen generator contains sodium chlorate mixed with barium peroxide and potassium perchlorate. Pulling down the mask activates a spring-loaded mechanism which strikes the percussion cap in the oxygen generator. This percussion cap has a small explosive charge which starts the chemical reaction which produces the oxygen for you to breathe. This sustained reaction produces enough oxygen for a single passenger for about 12 to 22 minutes. The reaction itself produces a lot of heat and the oxygen generator can reach temperatures as high as 232 to 260 degrees Celsius or 450 to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. But there is a protective shield to protect the passengers from this excessive heat. These oxygen generators give pilots enough time to descend to more breathable altitudes below 8,000 feet where it is safe to breathe without the use of a mask. If you're interested in this sort of thing or where things can go wrong in a plane, check out our podcast, Black Box Down. It's available wherever you listen to podcasts. In one of our early episodes, Tragedy in the Everglades, we discussed ValueJet Flight 592, where the heat of the oxygen generators ended up causing a crash. It's not in the way you think. <laughs> you, you don't have to worry about this kind of thing anymore, but it's, an, it's interesting to see what happens with these.